this is so exciting. Okay. Uh, hey guys, it's me, 1239 here, and in today's video, we're finally going to be continuing to react to the Anne of Green Gables anime series from 1979. Oh my god. So, first of all, I apologize profusely of how long it's taken me to get back into reacting to this show. I really, really like this show, as you can tell by <laughs> my background. I really find this show aesthetically pleasing. It's just so, like nice and and it just it, it feels like such a feel-good show this is one of the reaction series that i haven't continued it's been literally two years at this point so i'm really sorry about that but now that i am done with school i can finally get back into reacting to all the episodes we'll be reacting to episode four titled Anne's history now honestly i don't really feel like i need to go back and rewatch the previous three episodes like before doing this video just because i feel like i pretty much remember everything that happened even though it's been two years since i reacted to the show so we're just gonna start from this point on if you guys would like to see my reactions to the first three episodes of the show i'll leave a playlist right here where you can check that out and then you can come back to this video once you're finished with those videos. Another thing I want to bring up before we actually start this is that I have trouble pronouncing the Japanese name of this show, so if any of you guys are Japanese or know Japanese, can you please let me know in the comment section below how to pronounce the show's name because I feel like I have gotten it wrong in the past, so I'm really sorry about that, but I literally can't find someone who actually knows how to pronounce the name of the show. So yeah, do me that solid, please. Without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> I kind of feel nostalgic over this show, even though I did not grow up watching the show. I don't know if I've said that. I probably have said this in my other reactions. So for some of you guys who've grown up watching the show, this probably feels very nostalgic to you and really special. Unfortunately, I didn't grow up watching this show. I did grow up watching another show. I grew up watching the animated show, like the Canadian show that... Sullivan did. <laughs> I'm almost 100% sure that I grew up watching that show because the intro is so familiar. We will actually watch that show one day. <laughs> it was the last quarter of the 19th century when a skinny, redhead orphan girl arrived on Prince Edward Island. The little girl's name was Anne Shirley. This part was really sad. Little Jerry Boot from the creek was here early this morning. Oh, Jerry. Oh my god. Did we see this part? I think we did. This is like the preview. And like, this part was really sad. <laughs> Aww. I love how it disappears. That's so interesting. Like it actually would in real life, you know? <laughs> the awkward silence. It's been my experience that you can nearly always enjoy things if you make up your mind that you will. I'm pretty sure this is like word by word from the book, which is kind of interesting. I love seeing the fact that they created a show that is super loyal to the book. Like even though I love deviations like I love shows and films that have deviated from the book but I also like that there is at least one entity that still remains loyal to the book I have red hair and red-headed people can't wear pink not even in their imagination and also watching this in Anne with an E because I hadn't read the book yet I had no idea at the time that this scene and pretty much every scene in the first episode, not all of them, but a lot of them were faithful to the book. Like, they were word for word what is said in the book. I didn't realize that until I actually read the book <laughs> in my third year of uni. And also we see Marilla's brooch in this moment, which I have never noticed before that she actually wore. Where were you born and how old are you? Eleven? Was she eleven? Oh. What's wrong, Anne? I think this is interesting. There's no need to be afraid. I'm not. I don't want to because it would serve no purpose. Huh? Very similar to Anne with an E where it focuses on Anne's trauma. I think that's really interesting. How do you do, Marilla? I assume this is the little orphan you told me about. That was a short um, ride, I guess because they're only going to Miss Spencer. What Rachel said is true. We did want a boy, but because of some oversight, they sent us this girl instead. Mm, you poor thing. Poor thing? Look. <laughs> it's so sad, like... Ugh. The fact that they, and they sometimes, you know, still view girls and boys as commodities and as things that are either useful or not useful. This is 
interesting, though, because they actually didn't, like, add the point where Mrs. Hammond... No, it's not Mrs. Hammond. Mrs. Blewett, right? I actually don't remember if that was in the book. Was that in the book? Because I recently saw the ballet, and I think they incorporated some things of Anne with an E. I'm pretty sure Miss Blewett is in the book, and they have that moment where Marilla actually saves Anne from getting taken by Mrs. Blewett. And I'm pretty sure it also happened in the 19... 34 version as well, so I'm almost confident that this is a deviation from the book. But I also feel like this kind of wastes a bit of time with these, like, not waste, I don't want to use the word waste, but it kind of spends a bit of time with, like, long pauses. And I turned 11 in March. Oh, sorry, she is 11. <laughs> I think I've had a father named, uh... Well, let's say Jedediah. Wasn't it Hezekiah in the 1934 version? It was so, like... <laughs> it's a disgrace to have a father name of place. Hezekiah. Hez Hezekiah? I'm sorry if there's actual people that are named Hezekiah, but, like, I wonder why they changed that. Do you think you could tell me a bit more about yourself? Mm -hmm. She's like, I don't want to. <laughs> Shortly after they got married, they went to live in a teeny-weeny but ever so cozy little yellow house in a place called Bolingbrook. Did they ever say where she grew up? Oh, are we gonna get it? That honeysuckle over the parlor windows. We're actually getting like images. I almost forgot about how they incorporate like imagination. Like they incorporate like fantasy in the show, which I think is really cool. And it's not really something that other versions do because they are live action while the show is anime. My parents took great care to have everything clean and proper. We don't ever get to see your parents though, right? That's the house in which I was born, the Shirley residence. <laughs> oh my god, she's so cute. It's literally her, but just as a baby. We've never seen Anne as a baby before. My mother. Oh, darling mother. I'm pretty sure this wasn't in the book. They probably had to add dialogue that wasn't in the book just so that they can make this 24 minutes long. Father died only four days after mother. That left me an orphan and folks were at their wit's end what to do with me. I feel like I'm learning so much more about Anne than I thought I could. Ooh. Even when I was a little baby, nobody wanted me. It seems to be my fate. That is so sad. P.I. I love the way they animated it. It looks so good. I want to go back so badly. I don't know when I'll- if I'll ever be able to go back. And I also- I recently, like- was looking through my camera memory card and uh, I couldn't find any picture of me on the sand. My sister does have a picture that I took of her on the red sand, but I don't have a picture because at the time I didn't know how, you know, Anne would be a big part of my life. I also didn't really know what Anne was at the time. I really regret that. <laughs> I looked after their children. There were four of them. Ooh, that's kind of a haunting image. He often shouted at us. Aww. And when the younger children cried because they were scared of him, I was punished. I'm literally gonna cry right now. <laughs> Why is this so sad? She's so precious as a child. Oh my god. I mean, she is the child, but as a younger child. And then Mr. Thomas was killed falling under a train. Mrs. Thomas went to live with Mr. Thomas's mother, but she didn't want me. Oh yeah, I remember this. <laughs> then Mrs. Hammond from up the river came along and said she'd take me. This is so dark. And I also like how they like had this sepia filter because it contrasts with like her life in Green Gables and like the colors of PEI. And then we suffered through that unbearably cold winter. Mr. Hammond died of pneumonia. Oh. I thought it was like a heart attack. Wait, is that just an Anne with an E? Of course, no one wanted me. So she just wandered around? I had to go to the orphanage in Hope Town oh, okay. because no one would take me. There's so many kids just watching her. <laughs> and I was to stay there for four months. Until the other day when Mrs. Spencer came, Miss Cuthbert. Didn't she have two families, though? Or did I just completely black out at this at that part? When my mother and father died, I was fortunate enough to inherit all their books, and when I was big enough, I read them all. Wait, really? The problem is, I read these books off, and I learnt them off by heart. So she had all these books with her all the time? Were they good to you? They really meant to be good to me, I'm sure, but they had a good deal to worry about, Miss Cuthbert. They simply didn't have time to worry about an orphan like me. I desperately tried to help, but at the same time, I was merely an additional burden to them. She tries to really, like, spin things around so that she doesn't feel bad about how they treated her. Mr. Thomas took us all to spend the day at the seaside. Oh, Miss Thomas. Miss Hammond. Okay, so I literally like just overlooked the Mrs. Hammond part. I did not follow that. I do hope with all my heart it isn't Mrs. Spencer's place. <laughs> oh, so that... 
was in Mrs. Spencer. I'm so confused. I was not paying attention. Somehow, Miss Cuthbert, when we get there, it will seem like the end of everything. But she hadn't quite given up hope that she might be allowed to stay at Green Gables forever. Which is very important. She had a neighbor who'd like to adopt a young girl, but more about that next time. Okay, so who was the woman she was talking to before? I don't understand. The fact that they spell, they still spell Maud's name with an E at the end, like Lucy Maud Montgomery's name, the Maud part with an E, wow. Okay, so that is the end of this reaction. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will definitely be posting these reactions more frequently. A couple of them a month probably. I know there's 50 overall so it's gonna take a while but these videos are actually pretty easy to edit. The only thing that really like worries me is the fact that they might get copyrighted easily because the first reaction that I ever filmed for this show it got copyrighted and I disputed it and they still said it was copyrighted. They didn't release the claim so I had to re-edit the episode and I actually started implementing the style that I started using in my current reactions, which is not something that I personally made up, but it was just something I had to start doing. With that being said, I really hope that this video comes out. And if you're watching this, obviously it has. And I'll try to release these episodes more frequently moving forward. Thank you so much to Raster. I'm Danny Fanta, Merry Chris Petito, and Zari Abdar for becoming channel members. It really means a lot to me. If you are interested in joining my channel membership, you can click on the join button on my main channel page, or you can find the join button below any of my videos. Currently, there are only two tiers, the Kindred Spirits tier and the Green Gables tier, so check out those options if you feel like joining my channel membership. And once again, thank you to my channel members for joining. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you guys want, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye! Mwah.